What's up everybody, Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jamin John. And we have yet another album review for you. And this one kind of came out of left field uh, because I had only heard rumblings of this band. And I'm kind of super glad we actually reviewed this one because this ended up being a really wild listen. So we are going to go over the latest offering from Sermon of Golden Verse. This also comes out on the 31st of March on Prosthetic Records. All right, as for when this band formed, I don't fucking know. Uh, I don't know a lot of things about this band. This band's kind of a mystery. I would say sometime before 2019, because that's when their first album dropped, uh, Birth of the Marvelous, which I imagine was pretty fucking awesome. That's a pretty bold fucking title yeah. there. I guess maybe Poland as the country, because the only show I think they ever played was in Poland, and then they disappeared again, probably to go back to the studio and record this. This is, again, their second album overall. I remember hearing Again, like rumblings about the first one, but nothing that made me want to like go check it out. Like, you know, nothing like, oh my God, year end list, the most majestic thing ever. It's literally marvelous. But what I do know is uh, they have a mysterious frontman slash multi-instrumentalist, simply known as him. And it's not like the hardogram him. It's just a guy in a mask and he goes by him and we have no idea who he is. We could venture some guesses, but we could still be wrong. There's going to be a lot of comparisons yes, there are. as we go on. And the other member was the one that I recognized, one James Stewart. Awesome drummer, formerly a Vader, currently in Decapitated, blast beat fucking machine. Dude's absolutely amazing. But this is not death metal. This is like kind of uh, progressive metal, blended with post metal, maybe... I don't know, alt metal? Yeah, all li little blackened at times. Incomparable to most genres I've heard, although I we're, we're going to draw a ton of comparisons yeah. here. But I don't know directly what to call this. Yeah, it is a blend of things, but believe me, we are going to name drop a ton of fucking bands in here because there's a lot of similarities to bands that we love. And uh, some of them are vastly different than one another. Yeah. But yeah. it's really interesting in terms of this blend. Now, full transparency, we were kind of taken for a loop with the first two tracks. The opening track, The Great Marsh, is, well, essentially an intro, but it's more of a build-up. It builds up to the next song, and it builds so seamlessly that we thought we were listening to the same track. But turns out we were listening to Royal, the second track, which is an absolutely stomping opener. And... Given the descriptions and comparisons that I heard to this band with bands like Tool, Catatonia, Soen, I was not expecting something this intense. Yep. But at the same time, given uh, James's pedigree in terms of all the bands that he has drummed for, I, I kind of expected some intensity, and believe me, we got intensity on drums. Oh my god, dude, the drums are unreal, because normally you think this guy, you think Crazy Blast Beat Man, which is what he is, but in this case, it's more of like a Gavin Harrison style, like porcupine tree drums, just crazy tribal turnovers all the time, and it's not so much like the normal, like, hi-hat, snare, fucking cymbal blast, whatever. It's mostly tom work, and it's syncopated into these giant, lush soundscapes, uh, except for Royal, and another song I'm gonna name later, where it is kind of riffy. Yeah. Almost like mashuga type like, industrial almost. Very, like, early Meshuggah, just in terms of, like, the syncopated grooves. Honestly, some of comparable to Decapitated, which is familiar territory for James. I would even go as far as to say, like, Danny Carey, honestly, is another one, especially, again, with the creative, you know, constant tribal fills, and, like, there's even a section on the song where there's, like, almost like that sort of tabla sound on there. Like a tabla sound on a snare march. I mean... But... And on top, this layer of lush synths and ambience and the vocals. Him, whoever him is, I don't know. I don't either. It's very Jonas Rensk, very Ross Jennings. Uh, I can't remember the name of the guy that fronts Soen. Very him, yeah, too. Even Maynard. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the, the tool comparisons are striking here. Yeah, especially when it comes down to the more tribal rhythms on here, namely on Royal... Light the Witch, and the song Golden. There is sort of that following the drum pattern is kind of hypnotic in itself, but you also have this vocal cadence where there's a lot of refrains of lines that kind of get stuck in your head, and it's the pattern of how he says it. 
But vocally, the dynamics are absolutely amazing. You have like the very somber, forlorn, sort of breathy cleans, again, like Jonas Rensk of Catatonia. But you also have like big, desperate shouts on here, kind of reminiscent of those big buildups that Maynard does too. Even a couple moments of like lower registered growls. Yeah. They, they're not prominent whatsoever. No. It is mostly remarkably beautifully clean vocals, but sometimes you do get a lower register, it just plays into his whole dynamic. Like, this guy does so much with his voice, and it's so fucking pretty. Yeah. Even the Ooh. harsh screams that are on Departure and the end of the album, very urgent, very emotional. Like, there's no point on this album where it feels as though it's like kind of like, you know, just dialed up, like, yeah, I can just give it a big shout. Like, all this is very emotionally driven. Yep. yep. But also, like, I guess, like, technically and musically driven just in terms of, like, the pulse and the beat and the construction of this album. Because, again, like we said, we were kind of thrown off by the intro. This whole album flows beautifully, one track into the other, but there are clear breaks in terms of, like, the ambiance or a melody that builds up. There's even some interludes on here, like, uh, in black and center, which... Again, I generally bitch about interludes, but these complement the songs because they flow into the next one. It's not just a soundscape. There's like a melody. And yeah. It yep. actually locks right in step with the next song. As if there wasn't already a build with all these songs anyway, the interlude breaks are more like builds into the next movement, say, of the record. The way everything bleeds together, it's just, it all transitions like butter, dude. Like yeah. Fucking melted butter. This was one of the smoothest listens I think I've had just in terms of like nothing jarring, switching back and forth, but at the same time it's like done at such a good labored pace where everything has a moment to breathe and build up and building is a huge thing. Namely a song like The Distance. The Ugh. Distance has like almost this post metal sort of build, like kind of similar to bands like The Ocean or Cult of Luna where you start off very minimalistically. This one for instance has like a cool drum and bass sort of groove where Again, that's kind of that Danny Carey sort of accent yeah. and a, like a Justin Chancellor style fucking bass run. But it steadily builds up. Like you hear like different accents come in and then you have these kind of set in the back vocals or kind of warbling, a little desperate. Yep. And then it continuously keeps building in intensity and layers. And when it comes down to crescendos, Holy fucking shit. Yep. These guys are good. You end up with these big stomping fucking chugs and this gigantic vocal serenade. I cannot tell you enough how much I praise this guy's clean vocals. Like, you remember the first time you heard Andy Thomas from Black Crown Initiate? It's kind of like that when he builds. You're just like, dude, yes. And again, with the pace and the construction of this album and how it flows, I like that there are really good peaks and valleys, very distinct ones. The song Senescence, I think that's how you say that. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen that word before. Either. Very soft, very forlorn. It has this sort of like, you know, jazzy sort of swing to the rhythm. It's definitely uh, the slowest song on there. It's more about like the open space and the mood. The vocals are very somber, more withdrawn, but you have, again, big crescendos. And it still builds really well, especially, again, to a giant crescendo at the end. But it's emotionally very different on here. Like, I like the fact that they capture a lot of, like, different, you know, emotions on here. Because there's definitely more intense biting songs. Like, namely, uh, Royal, Wake yeah. the Silent, and the Closer, Departure. Departure, fucking... Which is, Ugh. kind of threw us off completely when we Ugh. heard that one. With its flat-out blast beats and more post-black metal vibe, like Wayfarer yep. and, God, I would even say, like, uh, Numenorian. Yep, yep. Wasn't expecting that, even though, like, you know, when it comes down to James's drumming, blasts are actually what I expect. But on this whole album, he is just doing all sorts of crazy shit that is not blast beats. In fact, up in this point, you had maybe a couple of sections where he got a bit faster, but it wasn't a straightforward blast. No, yeah, he got faster again using toms and, like, these odd, like, snare combinations. But in this, it's consistently blasty. They do break it up with, like, some more groovy sections, but I like the dynamic on this song in particular with the kind of switch from the groove sections to the blast sections. The blast sections you would think would be the like heavier section. It's actually like the most emotional one where the vocals are more soaring. And then when you get down to the groovy section, you actually get more of the harsh vocals. Yep. It's a little bit more, you know, kind of robust, like maybe like just a touch of death metal or like maybe Gojira to it. Yep. 
Yeah, it's not the typical play. Like, you'd think, like, where it gets heavier is where we get more gruff in the vocals, but where it gets heavier, he's more apt to really just have these, again, soaring fucking choruses, and then when it gets groovy, that's when he gets down to the vocals. It reminds me of a, a Gary -a song a lot in the way it, it builds from these fast paces to the slower paces while keeping those vocals at an even kiltered pace. It has that same sort of, like, desperation, too, and that's yeah. what I really like about it. Like, again... This is a very emotionally driven album, and you can definitely feel it. Like, you can even feel it in something as minor as a key change. Like, it has emotional weight to this entire listen, and it really draws you in. Like, that's another level that I really appreciated about this listen. And in terms of, like, more progressive flavors on here, Light the Witch, I think, really stands out. I like the verses, how they're kind of broken up. You have that sort of tribal rhythm, that sort of chant buildup, and then you have these you know, more soaring sections that kind of pop in like a little brief accent. But when it comes down to the chorus, there's like this sort of, I don't know, kind of more post-punky vibe. Like it reminded me a lot of Killing Joke. And I kind of like the more like powerful vocals. They were like, you know, projected out a little bit more. They didn't sound as desperate or forlorn. They sounded, you know, like commanding. Golden does the same thing. When that song finally catches into the hook and the part where the, the crescendo really just peaks, it gets more more prominent again with big vocals as yeah. the catch. Like, that's how it builds the song. I would say that one is one of the most vocally driven because it has like some more straightforward rock hooks. Like, honestly, yep. if I was gonna pick one song in here that would be a single, and I know they shot a video for it because I watched it today and it's just weird and creepy and involves a basement and a red filter and then you see shadows moving around and then slowly down the stairs walks the him guy in his creepy fucking mask. Yeah, I was actually watching it and I was, we were jamming this record on Spotify, <laughs> yeah. I was watching it on my phone, like, ew, that's, Like, what's, what's going on that's here? Weird. What, yeah. Why, why are you walking towards me? Hey, stop. Just Stay hold on the stairs. your fucking creepy horses. Stay on the stairs. But this song actually has, like, a, a straightforward sort of, like, rock hook. It has the tribal buildup, like, literally this is kind of a Tool single. But it really fucking works, much like Tool singles usually did, at least back in the day. But even while it's a single, it doesn't come across as, like, a diet version of other things in this album. Yeah. You still have all the drum intensity, especially at the end. Like, he's going fucking hog wild near the end. But there's some really clever, again, like, tribal proggy accents on this yeah. along the bridge. I was literally watching John because he's a drummer and he was making drummer face like the entire time, which if you're not familiar with drummer <laughs> face, it kind of looks like a person's perpetually caught between I'm going to nut or I have to fart. Or I'm having a stroke. Those, yep, those, three, those three, things. those three right there. Yep, yep. He was making those faces and like, you know, you see the memes where people are trying to calculate things and numbers like yep. I'm trying to figure out the fucking, what the fuck is he? It's okay. And have you ever seen like drummers when they when they groove to something? It's kind of different than the way other people hear it because you're following different patterns. So I'm over here like, ooh, 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 yeah. Definitely it was, it, dude, stroke it out. Yep, great, great performance. Overall, uh, I love this, and yeah, this one kind of caught me off guard. I, I wasn't expecting this to be anything because I didn't know anything about it. Like this band was a complete fucking mystery, and I escaped this listen a fan like a pretty big one like i'm legit gonna order this like yep. not long after this this is absolutely fantastic i'm gonna give it a solid four and a half wow what a listen like it's a flat out journey of an album like it moves through varying levels of intensity and moodiness the vocal hooks are fucking gigantic on here and just the dynamics alone with the desperate calls the crooning the fucking shouts and screams it's just fucking awesome, but man, James stole the fucking show on here. This is by far the coolest drum performance I've heard from him, and I've heard his work with Vader, I've heard his fucking work on the new Decapitated album. Jesus Christ, he fucking killed it on that too. This album knows how to build an intensity and an emotion and then drop you right back down. It's fucking remarkable. I mean, again, if you're a big fan of like Catatonia, Tool, uh, Porcupine Tree, fucking later Rivers of Nile. I think that last yeah, Rivers of Nile is yeah. kind of comparable too. Even a little bit off of Where I Know My Name, like the progressive styles. Though. Yeah. It's it's all kind of there. And I mean, honestly, if you just like hooky music that tries a little bit harder than, you know, just the standard stuff that you hear on the radio, this is it. Check this out. This is an absolutely awesome album. 
Uh, I need to go get it. So go ahead, John, give it your rating because I right. need to order something. All right, look, I I am at a strong four and a half, if not closer to a five. I'm really, like, right in there. Like, I don't have any gripes about production and everything's crisp and clear and it's layered well and it doesn't sound congested the music is beautiful uh as much as i like nasty dark fucking horrible crazy death metal i also am a sucker for smooth ambient clean lush soundscapes and layers upon layers and it's all here and vocally it's amazing i mean it's again a strong comparison to Catatonia, Haken, um, Black Crown Initiate, Tool, Genghis Tron. The drum work is anywhere between Blake Richardson and Phil Collins. Like it, it's just magical. Gavin Harrison, I know I said that. Every song is entertaining and they're all unique in their own right. And every song has a little bit of flavor and flourish that the song before it doesn't have. It continually builds. It's just nonstop entertainment. Uh, the last song just crushes. I don't know how much more I can suck off this album, but I it this being the first thing I've ever heard from these guys, I'm immediately hooked. Awesome, fucking amazing album. Uh you guys him? I don't know who him is. He him them him? him. I don't know. Him. Good job on the vocals. James, fantastic job on the drums. I can't say enough good things. Four. Yeah, you can. You've said I plenty. can. I've said a lot of good things. I think I've just gushed about this. But yeah, four and a half, if not five, so we're in there. Awesome. No complaints. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. Also, our store, which is, again, decidedly empty, but we're going to fix that. But that has to wait until after Denver Death Fest. Denver Death Fest, April 20th through the 22nd in Denver, Colorado. Three days, 28 bands. 65 bucks for three days, 45 for two, or 25 for one. That's only during pre-sale times. That ends in just a couple weeks, I think on the 15th of April. After that, it's $35 a day the door. I don't care how you come out. Just come out. Enjoy the band. It is stocked full of fucking bangers. Thank you to our vendors. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to all the bands that are playing. It's been a pleasure to be a part of this. Come out. Have a beverage with us. Have a smoke with us. Walk around. Bang your head because that's what we'll be doing. You should do it too. And of course, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that jazz. It means the world to us. Been a fun week of reviews, lots of yeah, fucking surprises. We're not entirely done yet. We still got one more we're going to go over. So, yep, yep. yeah, kind of a bonus one. Again, I will be gone next week. I'll be on vacation down in Florida buying every fucking metal CD I can fucking find, more than likely. But the other fine thralls will be taking care of things yep. and reviewing whatever comes out. Yep, Shred Miller and I will take care of uh, reviews. I know we got some more band interviews coming up. Kind of a little pre-performance for Denver Death Fest. Not so much music, but you get to hear from a few of the artists that are on the bill. We've gotten to interview some really cool fucking people, and we're not done yet, so you're probably going to see a little bit of that. Regardless, there will still be awesome Thrall's content coming your way, because no man left behind. Absolutely. So once again, thank you all so much for everything you guys do, thank for you. fucking keeping us going, and we will catch you later.